Today we're going to be checking out the life pedal from Earthquaker Devices. Good afternoon. How's it going? I hope you guys have all been doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Miles. I, uh, I talk about music stuff. And today we are going to be talking about the third iteration of the life pedal from Earthquaker Devices. But before we jump into that, just be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button trying to grow the numbers on this channel and make my videos more visible to more people. And by doing that, you'd be helping me out a lot. So thank you. So I got lucky recently and my wife had gotten me this as a birthday present and um, quite unexpectedly, I've been wanting to get my hands on this pedal for a while um, and now I have it and I am ecstatic. The Life Pedal is a collaboration between the company Earthquaker Devices and the band Sun or Sun O. I'm pretty sure it's just Sun, but it's a collaboration between the company and the band and it's the third version of this collaboration that they've done. The difference here being that this one's more readily available for mass consumption, while the other ones were limited runs that are now very expensive on Reverb and other uh, websites. But you might be asking yourself, what is the Life Pedal? What does it do? The Life Pedal is a distortion pedal that's sort of based off a of Proco Rat with an analog octave included as well as a boost as well. For as gnarly as this thing gets, it's pretty flexible and it's got some cool features involved along with the octave. So um, let's talk about all the different controls that are on this thing. Up first on our list of controls is amplitude. This just controls the output of the pedal itself. Up next is the filter control, which in this case is serving as a tone control that when you have it set to zero is giving you the full frequency response of whatever your input signal is, whether it be guitar or bass. And as you roll the knob counter, uh, no, as you turn it clockwise, <laughs> as you turn the knob clockwise, you're getting most of the high frequencies rolled off and it gets to be pretty dark farther over you turn the knob. Up next is our distortion control, which controls, you guessed it, distortion. The higher up you have this, the more distortion that's in your signal. Pretty straightforward. Thank you. 
things get a little bit more involved is with the next knob, which determines the type of clipping associated with the sound that you're getting from the pedal. The term clipping in regards to distortion pedals is just in reference to how the pedal responds to your playing in terms of how it's representing the distortion associated with the input signal. And we have three different selections that are on here. The first one being op amp, which is the loudest and probably the most cutting of the three options that you can choose from. Then there's asymmetrical clipping, which gives you a bit of a light compression and very mid heavy distortion. And then we have symmetrical clipping, which is going to give you probably the truest form of a Proco Rats distortion. It's very bass heavy and very compressed, but they all sound great. From there, we have the octave knob, which is going to control how much of the analog octave is introduced into the signal overall. Now it's worth noting that the octave that is built into the life pedal, it only works in association with the distortion. So if you were to try to use just the octave on its own, nope, won't work, which is kind of a bummer, but whatever, it's fine. Now being an analog octave circuit, it's gonna sound best when being used with higher notes on the higher register of the neck of your guitar, or your bass. And um, if you're using the neck pickup, it's gonna be more expressive in that case as well. Now, like I said before, the octave knob controls just how much of the octave of your notes that you're playing is being introduced into your signal. However, a cool feature that's included on here is the input for an expression pedal. So you can use that to actually dictate the level of the octave rather than having to lean over and turn the knob manually that way. So that's pretty cool. The foot switch for the octave section of the pedal also serves as a momentary switch, meaning that if you put your foot down on it and press it, keep it pressed, but then let go, it'll stop the octave, it won't stay on. Now you could use it that way or you can use it in the traditional sense where you step on it and turn it on. So it functions in both ways, it's just a matter of how you actually approach engaging the octave. So pretty cool. And then finally we get to magnitude, which is controlling the level of the boost section of the pedal. Now as far as the boost section of the pedal, from what I understand it's a MOSFET circuit that's based around an old boost pedal that Earthquaker devices used to make. I don't believe they make it anymore, but you could probably find it somewhere, otherwise you have it here. And as far as the boost circuit, you can use that independent from the distortion unlike the octave. And like I said before, the magnitude knob is the one that controls the level of the boost control. And um, it could get real loud real quick. Overall, this pedal is catering mostly to instruments that are tuned lower, like a baritone guitar or a bass, or just a down-tuned guitar of some sort. But it can be used in any capacity, and it can be used with other instruments as well. I've seen guys using drum machines with it, and um, yeah, if you're into the weird and the heavily distorted, the Life Pedal is something that you should check out. As far as my personal opinion of the pedal, I've really been enjoying this thing. Um, I find that... Usually the asymmetrical and the symmetrical uh, clipping options are the ones that I gravitate towards the most as opposed to the op amp one. Um, and I keep the distortion pretty low on it when I'm using it just to maintain some clarity in terms of my pick attack. But you would do this anyway when you're, when you're playing instruments that are tuned down lower. You don't want to be putting on a whole bunch of distortion because it's going to sound like a hornet's nest being kicked. It's not going to be great. 
<laughs> and I think it makes for good rhythm tones, but you can also get away with some really cool, wonky-sounding lead tones as well, especially with the inclusion of the octave circuit in here. So um, I'm really happy that I have this thing. And uh, if you're into this sort of stuff, you like heavily distorted guitar and bass tones, this is the guy to get. So those are my thoughts on the life pedal from Earthquaker Devices. I'm super grateful to have this now. So uh, shout out to my wife. She's the one who sponsored this video today. <laughs> and shout out to Earthquaker Devices for producing yet another great rendition of the life pedal to add to the line. And with that, that's all I got for you guys for today. As always, I hope that you found this video to be interesting and informative. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons as it's helping me and it's free and takes little to no effort. Um, so yeah, help me out. And if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support the channel further than just liking and subscribing, I'll have a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can go over and check out all the perks that will be attached to your contributions to the channel. So that's all I have for you guys for today. Thank you for your time. Hope to see you again soon. Keep playing. Peace.